Let's talk about how Doppler effect can be used for astronomy or astrophysics. I uh, put this in here, the <laughs> molecular cloud doesn't like you. It's actually a real molecular cloud. It kind of looks like a middle finger. I'll put it there for fun. All right, let's remember for Doppler effect what happens. If you're an observer here, and let's say you have a moving source going away from you, let's say. Remember, it's emitting light, and this light is going out in concentric circles, except as it moves. Then, of course, these circles get bunched up on the front side. So let's say this right here would be the wavelength here. Uh, and this right here would also be the wavelength. So if you're an observer, as this thing goes away, do you notice then you're going to receive light in this particular situation with a wavelength that's higher. So in other words, this light is going to be redder. Okay, so that's going to be key here. And maybe I'll put that actually in red. Maybe that would make sense. So this right here will be some light that's actually more red. So we have a word for this, right? If something is moving away from you, we call it a red shift. And if something is moving towards you, we call it blue shift. Just because redder, it just means higher wavelengths. Bluer means lower wavelengths. It doesn't necessarily get redder in color or bluer in color. It just means, uh, well, sometimes it does. It just means that wavelengths go bigger or wavelengths go smaller. So it helps to have an idea. Remember that blue is roughly 400 nanometers and red is roughly 600 nanometers. So just have an idea of it, at least what it is that our eyeballs see and what we call red and blue. So you can say, hey, red has a higher wavelength. Okay. So let's keep going then and see what we can do with this. So for astrophysics, it only works if your source, so like your star or a galaxy or whatever, is not going a considerable fraction of the speed of light. So what we say is we say it's non-relativistic speeds. That's because if you uh, go you know, close to the speed of light, then you have to account for it and because you start having to use relativity and all things get you know, more complicated. So we're going to assume your stars and your galaxies or whatever it is you're looking at are not going super fast compared to the speed of light. So well, how does this work? Well, we have an equation then, and we don't have to memorize it. It's in our data booklet. Basically, it says the change in frequency divided by the emitted frequency is the same thing as saying the change or the difference in wavelength uh, divided by the emitted wavelength, which is roughly, not exactly, but roughly the same as V over C. This is your equation from your data booklet. So what do all these things right here mean? You can see them here. So this is a change in observed frequency. So what you actually receive versus what was emitted. So you know you would do those two subtracted from each other to get delta F. F is just the emitted frequency by the source. So it's like the actual light that the star is sending off. Same kind of thing for the wavelength. So change in observed wavelength divided by the emitted wavelength. Because it's roughly equal to the speed divided by C. The reason we like to do this is because if you get an answer of like, I don't know, uh, 0.8 C, you know, something like that. Like, let's say you get V over C equals 0.8. That means your speed is, you know, 80% the speed of light or something. So this is a nice way to scale it to say how fast you're going or how fast your star or galaxy is going compared to the speed of light. So let's do an example. So if we look at this one here, we have a galaxy and it emits light that has a wavelength of 80 nanometers. And that same light is received on Earth with a wavelength of 86 nanometers. So keep in mind, it emits light at to this, and it's received on Earth as 86. So first of all, is the galaxy moving towards or away from Earth? Let's first figure that one out. Well, think about this. What's being emitted? It emits, so it actually sends off light at 80 nanometers. But what's received by Earth, you know, that's important, you know, what do we actually receive? We receive on Earth at 86 nanometers. I just wrote about uh, here we go. So received, we have 86 nanometers. So what happened? Well, what happened is the wavelength went up, didn't it? And if wavelength goes up, what does that mean? If the wavelength goes up, that means this thing is going away from you. So then we can say, ah, it's redder. So in other words, this one right here, we can say moves away. Okay, so this is what we can say moves away. We can say it's, you know, red shift. Okay, and that's because the wavelength got bigger. So I think that's a that's a good way to explain it here. So the lambda went up, so therefore it must have been moving away. Fine. Let's find out how fast is this galaxy going in terms of C. How do we do this? We're going to use our good old equation we just learned. So we have delta F over F equals delta lambda over lambda equals roughly... So approximately equal to V over C. How can I use this? What numbers do I know? 
Well, I know something about wavelengths, so I should probably use this one instead. I should probably just use this one. I'll ignore this because I don't know anything about the frequency. Okay, so let's do this then. So that means we'll say that uh, well, delta lambda over lambda will be equal to roughly V over C. What's delta lambda? Delta lambda is going to be the change in wavelength. So that means, let's say, 86 minus 80. And we're just going to do the absolute value, so whatever number is biggest, you know, to, to keep this positive here. Divide that by the emitted wavelength. So what was the wavelength emitted? Emitted wavelength is 80. Now keep in mind, I could say times 10 to the minus 9 everywhere, but if you notice, I've got this minus this, all in nanometers, divided by this in nanometers, that'll actually work. So I can actually use this like this. Now I'll say that'll equal V over C. Well, 86 minus 80 is just uh, 6. So I can say, ah, so V equals, let's see, it's going to be 6 over 80 times C. So I'm just moving my C over. So I'm getting this equation here, 6 over 80. All right, let's figure that out at least. I want it not as a fraction. I want it as an actual number here. Whoops. So I need to do, um, I'll do a pretty fraction, and I'll say 6 over 80. And give me the answer. So it's 0 0.075. That means V equals 0 0.075C. So I can say that's my final answer. In other words, I'm going 0 0.075 the speed of light. Now, I could also say, you know, I could also say this is actually 7.5%, you know, the speed of light, because that's another way to say it. So it's not considerable. It's not, you know, at the speed of light, but it's still going pretty fast. So that means that the galaxy is moving away from us, for example, at 7.5% the speed of light. So what have we learned? We've learned that Doppler effect in astrophysics, we have, of course, we reminded ourselves that if it's moving away, it's red shifted. If it moves towards, it's blue shifted. That's because a lambda is bigger or smaller. And we have this equation, and we're able to use it to actually do some calculations.